just going to be real quick about this. Here's another one in case you need to slip that hand into your other pocket. Okay. Remember, I almost got frosted this morning. My name is Chris Purdy, and the, one of the reasons that I love birding is because my mother was a birder. And she saw her first bird land in the driveway when she was pregnant with me. And she <laughs> influenced me and my brothers and sisters to become bird watchers. Years ago, I saw my first rosy finches in the town of Alta. But I did not want to be running down to Alta every time that I wanted to see rosy finches in the winter. So Powder Ridge Village Condominiums was willing to host a bird feeder. So I put the bird feeder up in 2009 and we started attracting rosy finches here right away. And after a while, this became one of the most reliable sites in Utah to attract rosy finches. Rosy finches are some of the least studied species in North America because they live in such rugged climates, but at least in the winter they're attracted to bird feeders. And that allows us to be able to capture, to band them, and start gaining data about this species that we did not know in the past. Like I actually feel like there's an icicle on my eyelash. <laughs> so today we are at Powder Mountain in Northern Utah, and we are with the Utah Division of Wildlife Resources, and we are bird banding. And what that means is we're safely capturing birds, and we're putting little bracelets on them with unique IDs, and that allows us to track their survival and health in the long term. So rosy finches are finches, so they're a medium-sized bird. And up close, what makes them really unique is that they have this beautiful pink on their feathers. And there's really few birds here in North America that have that beautiful pink. It's a good day. Thank you. You need more bags? Yeah. Okay. I got a big old blob of them. Rosy finches inside. So these rosy finches, there are yeah. three gray crown rosy finches and one black rosy finch. And now they're sort of in the queue so that they can get measured and weighed and recorded on this laptop. They each get their unique band. Um, that's part of a federal bird banding program. And then they get released. Let's say one, four, five, nine, five. It's 27.9. This one I'm going to call an after second year. After second. So no molt limits present on that, meaning that all the feathers are molted at the same time. Yeah, so they'll store the fat up underneath their throat and then kind of in their collarbone, wishbone area. So in order to get a look at it. Have to blow on it, it's kind of a third hand to get those feathers out of the way. Yeah. I think it's used to. How does that feel? Awesome. <laughs> Today was an exciting banding day because we banded our highest total ever rosy finches. We banded 58 gray crowned rosy finches. We banded one black rosy finch. We recaptured a total of 10 rosy finches of both species that we have previously banded. And we also banded a handful of mountain chickadees. So it was a very active and busy day throughout our entire banding period.
One of the things that is so important and I'm so appreciative on this project is how the biologists are really coming together to understand these birds during the full year, so their full annual life cycle. I mean, what I love about rosy finches as a biologist and just a lover of birds is that these species really connect me with the mountains, so it's like the shared love of place. So we just did our last survey point and we are in the Sawtooth Mountains at this beautiful alpine lake and we were lucky enough to see a black rosy finch. I remember my first alpine survey. We were like at point four or five of the survey kind of running out of space and thinking like, oh, oh well, you know. And then all of a sudden we, I was just, I just heard a, a bird and I was like, I have never heard that bird in my life except on Xenocanto, that's a black rosy finch. And I just, I'll never forget that first black rosy finch that I saw. They're just this crazy bird that is inhabiting this very rugged environment. And every survey we get a finch on, it's always so exciting. Black rosy finches are one of those species. Um, we, we don't know a ton about them. However, we've learned a lot more in the past few years. And because of the threats of climate change on the alpine habitat, we think that they could be in trouble. The alpine has changed in the last 50 to 70 years, and so has the climate. And so if we don't get up here now and see what's going on with these birds, we might miss what's affecting them with the changing climate. This morning we're doing a traverse across the talus, across this whole basin, and every 250 meters we place a point and we sit there and do a 15 minute point count. And during that point count we're targeting black rosy finches, American pika, mountain goats, bighorn sheep, and hoary marmots. So it's really important to be collecting this baseline data on these species of greatest conservation need so that we can either find out ways to conserve them and then delist them from our state list or find out what their status is and maybe what we need to do to conserve them better. So by coupling the work of researchers like Tempe here up in Idaho, um, our other colleagues across the Intermountain West, we're able to piece together the full story, the full year-round life cycle story for rosy finches so that we can then protect, manage, conserve them. My hope for rosy finches and the outcomes of this project is that we can find ways that these birds can persist into the future despite some of the tricky challenges that climate change um, uh, present. A black rosy finch. This is very exciting. You ready? Hey, buddy. And why do you love this work? Like, what oh. is exciting about it to you? Because I'm a biologist wannabe? No, I'm kidding. You can edit that piece out. <laughs> okay. <laughs>